uh, QRSF has a lower volume of administration and possibly less acute events, but uh, units who are used to servant on a regular basis do not uh, face much of a problem as they are used to it. Higher initial dose uh, has been shown in Ramnathan study to improve survival in the smallest babies and there is a reduced need for repeat doses. Uh, it should be warm to room temperature and it should not be returned to the refrigerator more than once. So if at all you take it out anticipating use and you don't use it, you should write clearly that it has been returned and the next time it comes out it has to be used or thrown. Each single use vial should only be entered once. So if the dose used is lower than what is in the vial you have to discard. Once a decision to administer is made, we should draw the dose in the syringe and connect to a pre-cut end hole catheter. Usually a five French catheter is adequate for any size of ET tube from 2.5 onwards. Uh, there are different ways of cutting the catheter tip. Some units measure it to the length of the ET tube and keep it a little shorter than that. But in general terms, uh, cutting it to a length of eight to 14 centimeters, uh, I tend to cut it at 10 centimeters and use it for any ET tube length and it works. The baby uh, is intubated without pre-medication in the labor room for obvious reasons and we should ensure accurate ET tube placement by using a ET uh, carbon dioxide sensor. The color change should be yellow to confirm the position and a rough guide to fix the ET tube in position is weight in kilos plus six centimeters even though in the very tiny babies even a small adjustment may result in the tube slipping out so we have to be very careful how we secure it. Use of the vocal cord marker while you intubate is a useful technique. And auscultation can help, but it's not very reliable. We don't usually wait for the x-ray in the labor room if we decide to give surfactant there. But secure the tube first because sometimes uh, surfactant bubbles through and makes it slippery to hold the tube. So fix the tube before you give the surfactant. Uh, connect to the pulse oximeter, which is routinely done these days anyway. Once the baby is stabilized with the heart rate and saturation stable in the expected range and the baby has a good tone, administer by connecting, disconnecting the IPV device and inserting the pre-cut catheter. We can administer in a aliquot of two to four aliquots. So Curoserve is a lower volume. So giving it as two aliquots is adequate while Cervanta you may need to split it for four aliquots. Uh, this is left to the individual decision as well as how well the baby is tolerating. If you instill too much, it may start frothing through the tube and IPPV may be a little difficult. One technique is to use slightly prolonged bite time with the Neopuff while you're giving surfactant. So this prolonged inflation helps the surfactant spread better. And uh, if the baby starts desaturating, you may need a slightly higher pressure during that stage. Uh, there is no evidence that using different positions during the administration improves the efficacy. So majority of the units do not routinely turn the baby. Uh, the leaflet uh, description is also different. For example, in Curaserve, the advice suggests turning to right and left for the two aliquots. The servant uh, uh, leaflet advises a 10 degree head tilt up and down and turning to the right and left as well. So Wherever I have worked both in UK and UAE, we are not turning the babies during the surfactant. Ensuring the tube position is a more important step and giving it in a safe liquid. So this is the diagram in the Cervanta leaflet, but it's not followed. Administration in the NICU, of course, it's usually as a rescue dose or for repeat dosing. It's indicated when the baby stays ventilated with more than 0.3 FAO2 and you can wait up to 0.4 FAO2 in the uh, larger preterm babies or the more mature ones beyond 30 weeks. The repeat dose is given earlier if there is difficult ventilation or high FAO2. So that is after the baby has received the first dose and you happen to stay on ventilator or you are on CPAP, but you can think the baby is worsening, you can repeat the dose. Uh, usually two to three doses are the maximum we use these days. Uh, Consider endotracheal suction before you give the dose because we don't prefer to suction for some time after the dose. Uh, preparation and administration is similar to the labor room administration. The dose is 100 milligram per kilogram for repeat doses for both Curoserve and Cervanta. You may round it off to the closest uh, to avoid opening a larger vial or uh, to uh, I mean to avoid wastage. So even if it's a little over 100 milligram per kilogram, according to the weight of the baby, we may give it. 
general advice is not to suck out the endotracheal tube for at least an hour or so after the surfactant. But if there is a sign of tube block and the baby is desaturating, you may need to suck it out. So it's not a hard and fast rule. You have to be sensible because the baby has to oxygenate. And uh, if the tube is blocked, you have to suck it out and secure the tube. So the adverse events during the administration, we may have desaturation and bradycardia and hypotension may happen. So it's important not to prolong along the process also to be careful not to institute too large an aliquot which may block the tube uh, delayed side effects are reported and air leaks may happen if you don't weed the ventilation adequately nowadays volume guarantee modes are quite handy and we avoid excessive use of pressure in this setting there is an increased risk of pulmonary hemorrhage this was shown to be more with the synthetic surfactants but we have to be cautious uh, in the setting especially with the repeat doses and if you don't take care with the asepsis part, there is a possible increased risk of infection. Uh, we have to monitor carefully during the administration and if any immediate side effects are noted, hold the dose, continue positive pressure ventilation. And as I said, you can give a slightly prolonged uh, inspiratory time with the Neopuff or a slightly higher pressure and you can continue dosing once stable. As the lung compliance improves rapidly after the surfactant, especially after Curacao, the improvement is even faster. The clinician should be by the bedside. They should watch the progress. They should watch the loops and uh, uh, measurements seen on the ventilator and wean the ventilation. Volume guarantee modes are preferably used in this setting. And saturation and reduction in FAO2 can guide the pressure reduction. But uh, like in any form of uh, ventilation, if you see that the baby is not coping well with volume guarantee, you should be open to change it to the mode like SAMB with a reasonable pressure setting, which is not overdoing and wean quickly.